Hello everybody, welcome to this video. Today I wanted to film a quick January wrap up or January? February wrap up and March TBR. I was debating just integrating this into a vlog but I thought maybe I would just film it on its own because I feel like these videos maybe would do better standing alone but I uh, am at my parents house hence this background and it is raining outside and I cracked the window I don't know if you'll be able to hear the rain but I was like cracking the window in hopes that you would be able to hear a little bit of trickling as some sort of like ambiance if you will so the first book that I finished was The Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector uh, this would have been my third Lispector, or fourth if you count her mini Penguin Classics book, but I really enjoyed this. I will say, thus far, um, or at that point, I had read Agua Viva, An Apprenticeship or the Book of Pleasures, and The Hour of the Star. Agua Viva would probably be number one for me. Then maybe out the hour of the star and then the apprenticeship or the book of pleasures. But the hour of the star is kind of loosely narrative based, but also not really. It is about this girl who lives in Rio and basically has no money and barely any means to survive. But you kind of get a glimpse of what her perspective of her own life is. And it is kind of one of optimism or oblivion or like a mix of both but I think there is like a, a level of hope and contentedness to this character and I found her perspective pretty interesting and just I mean very different from my own I feel like I have a very realistic perspective of the world and one may say pessimistic and so kind of stepping into this character a little bit was interesting um for me but yeah it was very short i really enjoyed it i want to say that it was kind of whimsical but i wouldn't say the the writing was whimsical in nature i feel like it was because of the main character and her kind of whimsical nature almost. I feel like she kind of existed in her own world, not in a negative way. I think just in the way that she is very individual and it isn't really influenced by perspectives, the mass perspectives. I mean that in a way that I find it very admirable as well. But yeah, that was The Hour of the Star. I really quite enjoyed that. Uh, the next book that I read was Penance by Eliza Clark. This was a buddy read with Pato um, and I have mixed feelings about it. Perhaps I think Pato also had mixed feelings. I think we both kind of agreed that the end was like good and bad at the same time. Like Girl C's section was very interesting, but also um, like the end end, I don't wanna like necessarily, not that it's a spoiler, but the end end was kind of disappointing for me. It's a fake true crime story within a novel. So it's a little like meta in that way. It's just, I feel like the whole thing is too loosely, there's so much that is unknown that it makes the act of certain things being unknown less intriguing to me. I say that because it is from the perspective of this journalist um, who's kind of been ostracized for reasons that are kind of spoken about in the book but he's like basically a weirdo for some reason and in the beginning it's like kind of a preface of this book was originally published about this story of these girls these teenage girls who killed their friend basically and it was taken off the shelves because of the scandals that this journalist was involved in and then it goes into the actual book written by this journalist 
And, you know, she, Eliza Clark is kind of getting at the fact that he's like an unreliable narrator, kind of a creep, um, which is like, I get that. I do. It's not lost on me, but also the way that it ends, it feels like I'm, I'm trying to figure out what part she's what parts she's being critical of and what parts she's not. And it's just kind of like, okay, well, I'm a little confused. You're not really saying like what you want to say. And so I'm kind of trying to deduce what you want to say, but I'm also not entirely confident about what's going on because I feel like she's not driving anything home. I don't know. I mean, there's a part of me that thinks that was completely intentional, which is fine. It just wasn't my thing. Um, that being said, I was highly entertained the whole time and I was like reading. I was reading it. I read it. But, you know, walking away from the experience and if I would be quick to recommend it to people, I probably would say no. I would recommend boy parts over this five times over but that's just my personal preference. Um, I really, really enjoyed boy parts, and so I was really excited for this. I was kind of let down, but oh well, I suppose. The next book was The End of Loneliness by Benedict Wells. This was a book that surprised me. I bought this on a whim a couple months ago, and it was sitting on my TBR, and I just had the sudden urge to read it. I didn't really know what it was about, but it is effectively about this boy and he loses his parents in an accident in his early childhood. He has an older brother, older sister, and a lot of the story is detailing how this accident affects the relationships between the three siblings. And they end up going to a boarding school and the boy meets a girl and they end up having a friendship and relationship and, you know, disconnection over a period of years and you know kind of goes through all the cycle of all three of those things throughout their lives. I thought the writing was very poignant and I thought the narrative was very well done as well. I enjoyed this much more than I thought I would and I would very much recommend it. It's similar to Shuggy Bane in the way that it is kind of centered around this character who is a boy coming of age and trying to make sense of the confusion and kind of chaos around him. In the instance of Shuggy Bane, that is his kind of dysfunctional family unit. And in The End of Loneliness, I would say it's similar, but for different circumstances. Um, but I would say the two books vary in the sense that The End of Loneliness, there's a lot more interiority, I feel like. And so you really get to know the perspective of this main character. I found that I really connected to that. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Would definitely recommend. It's one of those emotional reads that feels kind of good. I just realized that I actually went out of order, I think. I'm trying to figure out what I actually read in February because I think I like got the thing, the order wrong. Okay, so let me go back to books that I actually also had finished in February that I completely forgot. The actual first book that I finished in February was Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jedrowski. This was also a surprising love for me um, in the same vein of The End of Loneliness. I really like this. I listened to it on audiobook. It is about this queer boy slash man and is like kind of coming of age in that sense, living in communist Poland and this boy meets another boy at this camp and they end up having a relationship and the two of them have completely different perspectives to the political regime that is taking place in Poland and different aspirations and uh, different levels of willingness to kind of abide by the structures that are forced upon them and so there is that dichotomy between the two and you know through that kind of a discussion of what it means to conform or rebel. And so that was an aspect of this novel that I really enjoyed. There is kind of the discussion of queerness within that realm as well. So yeah, I really liked this. I thought the writing was very 
good as well or I should say I I really liked the writing and I connected to the writing in the book and would definitely recommend. It's a pretty quick read. I listened to it on audiobook. Maybe I said that already. I don't remember. But yeah, I had heard good things about it and I don't know why. You know, I'm just like one of like unfortunately sometimes I am one of those contrarian people that like will not do something if everybody is like saying I should do it. And it's not because I think those people are wrong. I have the full belief that those people are right. But there's something about doing the thing that people are like saying I should do that is just so difficult for me and I'm sure a lot of people in some way relate to that but and then the actual second book that I finished reading in February was I Await the Devil's Coming by Marin McLean. I found the beginning of this very interesting it's kind of like journal entries um and there are bits that I found very stunning as far as the writing goes but it was kind of one note to me and you know it's a diary so I can't really expect much necessarily but I I liked it there's kind of also like a homoerotic friendship slash lust slash just inherent queerness to this book if you will which I found like kind of a compelling perspective as this is as Mary McLean is somebody who grew up in the early 1900s in rural Montana. So it's just not really something that I come across very often as far as different perspectives go. So I thought that was good. I don't know. The prose was good. Her writing was good. And the perspective was also good, but also I found Mary McLean just to be a little redundant, like she kept saying that she was a genius, which is fine. Like I, I don't have a problem with her pr like claiming that she is a genius, but she just kept saying it over and over and over again. And there's, I guess there's a difference between writing for an audience and writing in a journal for oneself. But I was just kind of like, okay, like I get that. Like I've received that. That is how you feel about yourself. And I, I don't disagree. Like I'm not, I'm not necessarily in the place to have an opinion about that. But I just was like, okay, girl, like I love that. I really do. And what else? It was just the fact that like, that's what she was saying when she had, she could have been saying other things. I think that's what bothered me. And so the last bits of it I was just kind of reading it to read it because I was kind of over her and maybe that's something that I need to like unpack on my own and if that's the case I will fully own that but I don't know I found her like kind of annoying which uh, maybe that says something about me I don't know but if anybody else has read this let me know what you think but I will say she does encapsulate like girlhood and like early lust and attraction very well. I think I just like found her specifically a little bit annoying and off-putting and so it, it kind of took me out a little bit. The next book that I finished was Black Skin White Masks by Franz Fanon. I thought this was fantastic. I mentioned that I started this in my January wrap-up and obviously I finished it in February. Um, I love the perspective of Fanon. I think I really personally resonate with Fanon's work and so I just want to get more into him um, and I definitely recommend it. I really appreciate his perspective of colonialism. I think it's also interesting in kind of figuring out how that connects to the psyche of the colonizer and the one the party that is colonized and kind of like the different psychoanalytic effects of what it means to be a black man. I'm not really like super like dialed into philosophy so if I'm misspeaking a little bit let me know. I am happy to be corrected. And the last book that I read in February was Changed by Edouard Louis. Uh, this was a book that I got through NetGalley so I read it before it was published but it's now published. Uh, at least the translated version is now published. Uh, but I thought this was good. I enjoyed it. It's very much auto fiction. It's 
marketed as a novel, which structurally it kind of is. I don't know, I, thought, I found it to be a little bit weak in some places. Basically, it is about this boy who comes from a town where not many people end up, you know, pursuing education and university and academia or just um, a more stereotypical professional white collar career and this main character eddie uh does exactly that and it basically follows him from his teen years to his early adulthood and kind of traveling between his hometown to his school and to Paris where he goes to university and different relationships that have helped him get to where he is whether that be through his friendships or romantic relationships or some like blurred line between both of those things. Eddie is a queer man and is kind of grappling with that um, as he was bullied in his childhood for being gay. His identity wasn't really validated by his own family or community. It wasn't necessarily talked about and once he does move to Paris it is a big shift in just outward like being able to be outwardly gay and pursue relationships and escapades of the sort. I don't know. It felt a little uh, tell not showy to me at some point. I don't know if this is because it's autofiction, but it almost feels like the main character was like kind of reduced to this like to a few things and those few things are the drivers of the entire narrative. I say it is possibly due to it being autofiction because you know if the author is basically writing about his own life he has like the subconscious knowledge that of all of the things that he has lived through and have influenced you know decisions he's made here and there but the reader doesn't so i feel like he omits a lot of nuance that exists that would have made the novel more effective for me. That being said, I didn't have, I didn't dislike the experience of reading this. I, I, I looked forward to reading it, and when I finished, I was like, okay, that was like a good time, but it, it wasn't like a favorite really. So there is that. So those were all the books that I read in February. Uh, as far as March TBR. I've already read three books thus far, and I'll just name them off. Uh, A Horse Sent Night on Writing, On Palestine by Noam Chomsky, and In the Cafe of Lost Youth. Those were the three that I read. I'm currently reading The Passion According to GH, and I have started, thanks to Sophie and Nathan, I've started Funny Weather by Olivia Lang. So, that's been a long time coming. Uh, another book that I would like to read is Young Mungo by uh, Douglas Stewart. I started listening to the audiobook and I also have the physical copy, but this, the, the narrator has like a Scottish accent and so I have to, I usually listen at around 1.8, but I've been listening at 1.5 because I need, I'm like trying to understand his accent. And so, I don't know, I might just read the physical one because it just seems easier, but I don't know. I think I would like to listen to or read A Burst of Light and other essays by Audre Lorde. Um, I like to throw in some essay or political philosophy or kind of feminism, you know, in some capacity. Oh, I also would like to read an Easy Life by Marguerite Dura. One of my friends also bought this book recently and so I was like if you want to read that together we should read that at the same time. So that seems like a kind of quick read. I think that's kind of all that I have conjuring in my brain. I don't know if this is, I don't know if that's exactly what I'm going to be reading. That's kind of what I was thinking I would like to read but I might not. So don't hold me to it. That is all that I really have to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you when I see you.